Hello, this is David Cantor from Real World Tech. Hopefully you are familiar with my website, but if not, I would encourage you to check it out. We have the deepest technical analysis of graphics processors from AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA, as well as the best write-ups on CPUs from AMD, IBM, Intel, and others. Our forums are filled with folks from the industry and have some great discussions. Today we are going to take a look at the rasterization in modern GPUs from AMD and NVIDIA, with a particular emphasis on the tile-based rasterizer used in NVIDIA's Maxwell architecture. The Maxwell architecture is the basis of NVIDIA's GeForce 900 series, and the newer Pascal architecture is in the GeForce 1000 series. It also uses tile-based rasterization, as far as I'm aware. First, I want to take a step back and give you a brief overview of what we will be doing today. To start with, I'm going to give a bit of a refresher on the graphics pipeline and where rasterization plays a role. This will put our discussion into the appropriate context. Next, I'm going to describe the tools that we are using to characterize the behavior of AMD and NVIDIA rasterizers. We're going to use a simple DirectX shader, and I'm going to walk through the code so that you can understand what our tests are doing and also point out where you can download this code yourself. After that, we will run the tool on a system with an AMD Radeon GPU and explore how uh, the immediate mode rasterizer there works. And then we're going to take a look at the tile-based rasterizer in Maxwell and then discuss some of the more interesting results. This is not meant to be a comprehensive analysis or reverse engineering, but is really a high-level introduction to some of the issues and advantages uh, and behavior of tile-based rasterization. Modern graphics pipelines transform a three-dimensional scene into a 2D image. The 3D scene is composed of polygons, typically triangles, that are transformed into pixels on the screen using APIs such as DirectX or OpenGL. The majority of the work is done in programmable shaders that are flexible and enable developers to create sophisticated effects that accurately depict shadows, lighting, water, smoke, hair, and other visual effects. However, rasterization is one of the few parts of the graphics pipeline that is still fixed function and performed by dedicated hardware in the GPU. Rasterization is the process of going from the triangle-based representation in a three-dimensional scene to generate pixels for a two-dimensional screen. It occurs after all other geometric manipulations, but before pixel shading. In rasterization, the GPU determines which triangles will influence each pixel on the screen. Historically high-performance GPUs for notebooks and desktops rasterize across the whole screen at once, which is known as immediate mode rendering. Mobile GPUs from Apple and others use tile-based deferred rendering, where geometry and pixel work occur in two separate passes. The screen is divided into tiles, and all triangles are processed for a tile at once, and then pixel shading occurs afterwards for that tile. However, as we will see in a bit, NVIDIA is using a clever new tile-based immediate technique that divides up the screen into tiles, and then rasterizes small batches of triangles within the tile. The triangles are typically buffered or cached on chip, which improves performance and saves power. I've opened up our tool called triangles.hlsl, and we'll take a look around to understand how it works. It starts at line 23, where we create a set of triangles, and the vertices of these triangles are going to be located at the lower left, upper left, and upper right corners of the screen. So the triangles are really covering pretty much half the screen. Starting at line 34, we are coloring the triangles, and we're alternating the colors so that each triangle is visually distinct from the others. Now, the next interesting section is at line 59, where we are discarding all the pixels in the scene 
once we've exceeded a maximum number. This is going to allow us to roughly scrub through how a given GPU is rendering a frame, and we'll be able to see if multiple triangles are visible at once because they're different colors. Now, I'd like to point out that this tool was written by uh, Nicholas Guillermo. Uh, it's available on his GitHub page, and he did a fantastic job with it. You can actually go and download this code yourself and run it on your own system, although you're going to need the Windows 10 SDK. Okay, I've closed down uh, Visual Studio, and now I'm going to show you the hardware that my system is running. As you can see, it's a AMD Radeon 6670, and that's a pretty old GPU, but this is a system that I primarily use for office work, not for gaming, and it'll be more than sufficient to illustrate how the rasterizer works in an AMD. GPU. And now we're going to switch over to our program uh, called uh, Triangles and see how it works. So we've got this control panel in the lower right hand side with sliders that control various aspects of this demonstration. So the first thing we're going to do is set it to a small number of triangles. 12 works perfectly fine. And now the second slider controls how many pixels are allowed to be rendered overall. Uh, and if you'll recall when we looked at the code earlier, that was something that was pretty critical and controlled by the program itself. And so this is how we are going to control it. Now it's currently set at 0%, so none of the pixels are showing on the screen. As I drag the slider from 0% up, what we see is this triangle's coming in red. And now we've got another one coming in green getting painted on the screen. And now one in blue. And what we're seeing is that the pixels are popping up in roughly the order that they are being rasterized. And in particular, if you'll notice that as I drag to a higher percentage, what we're seeing is that the pixels are sweeping from right to left here, and then go down to draw the next line. And then they keep on going. And we can see that ultimately, if we go all the way through, and end up at 100%. Now the 12th triangle has been fully rendered. Now, this is the rasterization path that's followed by AMD GPUs. Now I picked 78.4% to illustrate that right now we've got two different colors on the screen. We've got blue and we've got green. And the blue and the green are from two different triangles. The green triangle has already been completely rasterized and rendered. And it's conceptually on the bottom, but it's now being overdrawn by the blue triangle. And if I drag this slider up a little bit more, we'll see that eventually the blue triangle covers the green triangle completely before it is in turn about to be covered by this yellowish triangle. So there are a couple more sliders in this control box here that I want to play around with. Uh, I've dragged the number of floats per vertex out to 23, and I think the key point here is that it doesn't really make a difference. And as I drag it around, nothing changes. So as we increase the complexity of each vertex, the rasterization path doesn't change. Uh, next we have the pixel format, and currently we're using uh, 32 bits per pixel with 8 bits for red, green, blue, and alpha. Now if I crank that up to 16 bits per channel, again, nothing changes. And if I go up to 32 bits per channel, again, nothing changes. And then lastly, I can change the sampling. And, you know, it, it, things are changing a little bit here, but not much. 
So the key thing to recap here is that no matter what I select, the rasterization pattern is the same for the immediate mode rasterization in AMD GPUs. We're going to sweep from the right to the left and from the top to the bottom. And as we'll see in a little bit, things are quite different when we start looking at a Maxwell-based GPU. We've switched over to a different system now, and as you can see from the device manager, this one is using uh, the NVIDIA GeForce 970. And as we mentioned before, that's based on the Maxwell architecture. So we're going to now pop over to our triangles tool and poke around a little bit. I've set the number of triangles to 12. As I slide the pixel bar up, we can see the rasterization pattern for the Maxwell-based GPU, and it's quite different than what we saw on AMD. I want to point out a few things. Over here we have some tiles, and these have been fully rasterized. We have a tile here that has been partially rasterized and partially completed. And then we have more tiles that are in various states of partial rasterization. Uh, now this tile over here, these guys have been fully rendered, and they're only showing pixels from the final of the 12 triangles, this sort of blue turquoise color. Now this tile over here has a combination of yellow and, and blue from two different triangles, but interleaved in this sort of interesting uh, checkerboard pattern. And then over here in this tile, we can see that there's three triangle, triangles being shown. There's yellow, there's turquoise, and there's blue. And then there's some black pixels where nothing's been rasterized at all. The overall rasterization pattern is left to right and then top to bottom for the tiles. And within the tiles, there appears to be this sort of diagonal checkerboard pattern. But the key observation here is that we're fully rasterizing and rendering within each tile before finishing the next tile, whereas in our immediate mode renderer, things worked in a slightly different fashion. Now, we can also play around with some of the settings to see what goes on when we change things. So if we change the number of vertices, what you see is that now, rather than having several tiles being partially rasterized and partially rendered, most of the work is happening in just one or two tiles. And the most likely explanation for this is that as we crank up the number of uh, attributes per vertex, it increases the amount of data. And I think what's going on is that the rasterizer is restricting its scope and working with fewer triangles and fewer tiles in order to make sure that no matter what happens, that the amount of data stays small enough to stay in an on-chip cache or SRAM. So next we're going to try playing with the pixel format. So we're going to bump up to 16 bits for each of the red, blue, green, and alpha channels. And as we did that, you can now see that the tiles are actually cut in half vertically. Uh, so they're now much more square. We're still doing tiles, and we're still going left to right, top to bottom, but the tiles are smaller. And again, I think this is all aimed with the idea of making sure that the pixel and the vertex data is not too big and stays within on-chip buffering. And if we take it another step further and go up to 32 bits per channel, the, uh, we can see that now the tiles are back again to being more rectangles, but they're half the size of what they were before. Now, if we increase the sample count 
this actually has a fairly similar effect. You can see going to two samples, the tiles again get smaller. Four, they actually don't change much. But moving up to eight, the tiles are back to this smaller size. And if we combine them, the tiles get even smaller yet again. We have now replaced the Maxwell-based GeForce 970 in our system with a newer Pascal-based GeForce 1070 graphics card. Again, we are going to keep the number of triangles at 12 and play around with the other sliders. As we increase the number of pixels rendered, it's clear that Pascal also uses tile-based rasterization. The tiles are fairly large squares, but the overall behavior is similar to Maxwell. Now, if we change the number of floats per vertex, increasing the amount of data for each triangle, it doesn't really seem to have an impact on the overall rasterization pattern. However, as we increase the pixel data from 8 bits per channel to 16 bits per channel, we can see that what was originally a square tile has now become a vertical rectangle that's half the size. And if we crank it up to 32 bits per pixel, we are now back to squares that are just one quarter of the size of the original tile used for Pascal. Similarly, if we were to go back to 8 bits per channel, and now increase the sample count, that's going to have the same impact and reduce the size of the tiles from a large square to a smaller rectangle. If we go up to four samples, unlike Maxwell, it decreases again this time. And now we're back at something that looks approximately like a square. But if we crank up the sample count to the maximum, we now get small rectangles. And we can combine this by increasing the size of the pixel format, which, again, is going to decrease the size of the tile even further. And if we go to the largest pixel format and the largest sample count, we now have a very small uh, rectangle that is being used for tiling. And as we grab the pixels and go more, we can see that the overall raster pattern is again from left to right and top to bottom. We have shown that NVIDIA's Maxwell and Pascal architectures are using an immediate mode tile-based rasterizer based on some fairly simple DirectX shaders. In contrast, AMD's Radeon series uses standard immediate mode rasterization without any tiling. While we are not showing any results from Intel's integrated graphics, I have run those, and the rasterization is also immediate mode and behaves similarly to the AMD Radeon. We have seen that the tile size in NVIDIA GPUs vary based on the complexity of the vertices, size of the output pixels, whether it's 8 bits per channel or 32 bits per channel, and the number of samples. As the data becomes more complicated and takes up more space, the tile size shrinks. I believe that what is going on is that NVIDIA's rasterizer changes the tile size to keep all the data on chip. The data is probably stored in the L2 cache or a dedicated buffer. We know the L2 cache increased in Maxwell and Pascal, which would be consistent with this theory. The tile-based rendering should decrease the amount of memory bandwidth used, which will improve performance overall. It will also increase the ROP throughput and may help to explain some surprisingly good ROP measurements from reviews at the Tech Report and other sites. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned a few things along the way about the rasterizers in NVIDIA's Maxwell and Pascal architectures and the immediate mode rasterizer in AMD's Radeon. If you have any feedback, questions, or want to discuss this further, please stop by the forums at realworldtech.com or find me on Twitter where my handle is thecanter. Thanks for your attention and have a great day.